Today I want to take a look at Revit LT versus Revit. Right now what you're seeing is Autodesk's website. Uh, just a comparison look at Revit LT versus Revit. A couple things I do want to point out here is the installation options here. You'll notice that standalone installs are allowed for both versions. However, on the LT version, we are uh, limited and cannot provide network deployments. Now this is not network licensing, this is a network deployment. Network deployments allow you to create a deployment image, that way you don't have to have the media to install it on each individual's computer. Secondary, I want to take a look at architecture and construction modeling. Under the architectural side, you'll notice all of the major features are still available in both software packages, being able to model and create uh, components. What I've done is I've launched Revit, full-blown Revit here, and then we've also got a copy of uh, Revit LT inside of here. And I want to take a look at some of the, the differences, nuances between the two here. Uh, let me go ahead and start a new project. I'm going to start this based off of the architectural template. And first of all, I want to dive into the modify capabilities. So here we're looking at LT. Here we're looking at full-blown Revit. Now I just want to compare the, the top two bars here so that we can see. Inside Revit, you'll notice we have a lot of modify capabilities. There's only one major change here, which is the array functionality. Inside of Revit LT, you'll notice we do not have array capabilities. One of the nice things about the array capability is it allows us to go ahead and place in a component. Um, let's go ahead and just place, yeah, what the heck, we'll go ahead and do this trailer, construction trailer here. So if I select that object, I have the ability to re array it, either linear or radial array. I can either do second or last position. I'm going to do second position, and I'm going to go ahead and place four of those in make an array inside of here. I can come back at any point, any time, modify the distance between them by just either nudging or moving them, or I can go in and adjust the number. Uh, now, since I did second placement, it's just gonna grow longer. If I did uh, last placement, it would automatically divide it out. This feature is not available inside of the LT version. A couple of other things that are not available inside here are parts versus assemblies. And this becomes really important in the construction modeling aspect. In construction modeling, we really want to break down and take a look at as much as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and place a wall in here. Let's go ahead and do a brick on metal stud. That'll work for now. And I'm just going to place a small piece in here, adjust my detail level to where we can start to see a little bit more inside of here. I am running in thin line mode just to make it easier to see the individual components. Now when I select that object, I get the ability to come in and modify and manipulate some of these components um, under the Create tab. You'll notice we do have Create Parts. Right now when I hover over top of it and select it, it's treated as one object. With the Create Parts functionality, I can then start to break each individual component down and start to join them and clean them up how I want to. Whether dividing parts, merging parts, or I can completely exclude a part out of it if I want to. Inside of Revit LT, however, I'm going to do the same thing here, adjust it to a fine level of detail. Make sure I'm looking at it in a thin line mode. When I select that object, you'll notice I do not have the ability to create those parts. <coughs> a couple other minor modifications between Revit and Revit LT is the ability to put multiple pieces together. Now for this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a sample file that we have here. <laughs> and 
And in the sample file, I'm going to take a look at a floor plan. Let's just do a furniture plan. Now, a lot of the times, if we have a, a standard setup here, say we're going to reuse this configuration multiple times in a building, a lot of people will want to go ahead and select things and create a group. For the AutoCAD users out there, this is kind of like creating a block, creating a representation. Well, in some cases, it's a feature, and we're going to want to really detail these features out. In that case, you'll want to create an assembly. Assemblies are not available inside of LT. I'm just going to call this Furniture 1 Assembly. Now when I take a look at that assembly, I can either edit it by adding additional components or removing components, or I can create multiple views of it. I'm going to create a couple of views here. And what that's going to give us is a dedicated view just to that component. That way I can detail it out. It makes it a little bit easier than creating a group, uh, creating an assembly. We can actually individually assign this assembly a, a separate part number or code instead of codes for each individual uh, component of it. So please stay tuned for the next section. Next we'll be taking a look at structural modeling. Future topics will be MEP, uh, Advanced Modeling Components, Analytical, Documentation, Collaboration. We'll be diving through all of these capabilities inside here.